Sadhguru. The first question is, uh, you've been traveling all around the world, meeting many number of people and affecting as well as helping their lives for the past 35 years as far as I hear. In all these years, you may have affected millions of lives. I feel it's also the government's responsibility to take good care of people and to help them. So my question is, why, why don't you establish a political party and run for the people's representative? Well, uh, we have a very distorted perception of what is politics, unfortunately, largely in the world, particularly in India. If something… if you do something wrong, we say, oh, he's doing politics <laughs> See what he's trying to push me into <laughs> But the real perspective of this is, Politics means it's about policy making. That means you set the direction for the nation as to where the nation should go, what it should achieve, where people should get. Essentially, directing the ship. Why, well, if you look at a nation as a journey, we are going somewhere, somebody has to captain it. Well, I think it is one of the most significant things that needs to be done in the world in a most responsible and sensitive way. Well, unfortunately, a whole lot of them have not earned this, that today it's become like this if you utter the word politics, it looks like we are talking about something dirty. It's, it's almost like that. So having said that, you okay? I tell you a joke, it's all right. You serious man, that's why I'm asking you <laughs> This happened. Three men who are in their older age who are retired. One was a, a surgeon, another was a general, another was a politician. They met in the old age home. And uh, they had a golf game, it went all bad. So they thought at least they'll have some good gossip. Bad game, what to do? At least good gossip. So they started this and then they said, uh, the surgeon said, of all the professions, the most important profession is that of a surgeon because it is only by cutting the Adam's one rib and making woman out of it that this whole world happened. So what can be more significant than that? Surgeon's profession is the most important profession in the world. So the general said, oh come on, it is clearly said that there was chaos and then order had to be brought in before this rib surgery happened. And who else but a general can bring order? Obviously we were before you and only because we brought order, you could do this surgery. The politician said, you guys are getting it all wrong, but who created the chaos? <laughs> well, that's not how it should be. That's not what politics means. Politics means sorting out problems, not creating problems. So, why should I not start a new party? You didn't tell me to join the existing ones at least, that's a good thing. <laughs> So it looks like I have at least a thousand votes here <laughs> but that's not going to get you anywhere. But that's not the point. The point is this, there are two dimensions to human life. One is arranging the external situations, which is in a way policy maker's business. And another is settling the interiority of the human being. In this culture, we have always held Settling the interiority of the human being far more important than arranging the outside. Because however well you arrange it, still if you are not organized well within yourself, still your life will be a mess. See, all of you, I'm telling you, I'm sure in IIT Kharagpur, 
uh, there are twelve thousand students, there must be at least twenty-four thousand complaints. <laughs> Hello <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, compared to any other generation ever in the history of humanity, you and me are living in the highest level of comfort and convenience and empowerment. Isn't it so? Isn't it so? But still, no generation has ever whined the way we are whining all the time. We are not enjoying this organization. Never before in human history, human survival was this well organized as it is today. So this is the time for a human being to organize the inner aspect of you so that the external organization doesn't go waste. Why I'm saying this is, already there's enough proof in the world that people can mess up the most best organization on the outside, can be messed up by internal things, thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight percent of the European population is on psychiatric medication. Why I'm picking on the European population is, this is a society which has enjoyed longest period of economic and material well-being on this planet right now. Almost nearly uh, two hundred years they've enjoyed material well-being like no other society in the world. How they got that material is another matter, I don't want to go into that <laughs> okay? But they have enjoyed material well-being for so long and thirty-eight percent. If you just withdraw a few medicines from the marketplace, the nation or the… all those nations can go crazy tomorrow morning. Yes? If pharmaceuticals go on strike, really, everybody goes crazy, how is this? You call this well-being? So one must understand, just organizing the external situations is not growing, going to bring human well-being. You can organize comfort, you can organize convenience, you can organize survival, you cannot organize well-being. Well-being is something that you have to earn within yourself. I have taken it upon myself to bring human well-being because this is inner organization of yourself. This is very important, otherwise all the bounty that the science and technology has offered us will go waste. And this bounty has not come free. Let's say we're sitting in the comfort of this hall right now. If this hall has to come up, come up every worm, insect, bird, animal, plant, tree has suffered, isn't it? Yes or no? For every convenience that you and me are enjoying, haven't every other creature on this planet suffered immensely? Hello? And when we cause so much suffering, at least we must be well. We sit in this comfort and we are miserable. We had no business to cause suffering to them, isn't it? In pursuit of our well-being, we did all this in the world. Are we really well? We are the most comfortable generation ever. But can we claim we are the most joyful generation ever? Unfortunately, no, isn't it? That's what I'm trying to change. So, uh, politics, there are so many people eager to do, we need to change them <laughs> That being in politics is not of personal ambition, but towards nation's well-being. This context we have to change in them, it is not a profession, it is a certain service that you have to render. So if this context changes in their minds and hearts, which we are trying to change, <laughs> that will be bigger than me starting another party. I think there are too many parties <laughs> Even the EVM uh, machine is complaining because <laughs> there are not enough slots, for all the parties, they're not able to find enough symbols. Uh, you know, all kinds of things, bicycle is okay, it's a common man's vehicle, but uh, anything and anything, you know, there are gas cylinder, there's a broom and there is a whatever, <laughs> all kinds of things because they're not even able to find symbols. What symbol would you give me? <laughs> so, he says turban. <laughs> then only the Sardarjis will vote for me <laughs> So,
So there is no need for one more political party. I would say there should be reduction of political parties in the country <laughs> to two or three or four, not uh, two hundred parties. It's just confusing the people, they don't even know whom to vote for. Because your chacha has started a party, how can you not vote for it? <laughs> you… <laughs> You don't know what is his ideology, you don't know what is his policy, what is his vision for the nation, nothing but he's your chacha <laughs> So if I start, all the millions of people who are in some way drawn to me, they will not know what is my vision, why I want to start this political party. Sadhguru, we will vote him <laughs> I don't want to bring that nonsense.